Let's talk about South Africa, the first tour in 1995. It was a, it was a cool tour. It was one of my first big internet. I'd done Japan a couple of times, but I, you know, so that was like, you know, once again, another totally unique kind of culture. Mm -hmm. And it was a hell of a journey to get there. We had to fly all through the Middle East and such, but we finally got down. And, um, you know, Don Callis, right? Mm -hmm. He manages, uh, I think, uh, Omega on AEW. Yeah, yeah. Right. No, okay, so not that's... now, but back then, a few months back. Oh, okay. Yeah. I know it. All right. But either way, back then he was uh, he was kind of working with Tony, the Winnipeg guy, that mm -hmm. we did the Northern trip. He was kind of Tony's main guy, and he was known as the Natural because he's a big Ric Flair fan. So instead of Nature Boy, Natural, mm -hmm. and he did pretty much everything. He he had the big capes, and, and you know. He tried hard to to do, to do Ric Flair South matches, and I I can't blame him because you know Flair is one of the greats. So either way, I I'd done a lot of work in uh, Winnipeg to the point where you know I, I had a fairly good name there. So Don called me and said, "Hey, you want to do the South Africa tour?" I went last year; it was fun. Blah blah blah. I said, "Okay, happy to do it." You know, I was just happy to get on the road at all at mm -hmm. that point. So we uh, we flew down there. It was me. There was Chi Chi Cruz. There was Eric Freeze. Um, Bad News Brown, Bad News Allen, depending on where you saw him work. Mm -hmm. um, I was tag champs, actually, with, with News down there. You know, wonderful guy. The world's the worst place off without him in it. I'm, mm -hmm. It's a shame he passed on. Yeah. But um, one of the guys there, and I'm going to call him, let's see. <laughs> I'll, call, I'll call him Gary. Okay, okay let, let's talk about name, Gary a little bit. That's right. His name isn't Gary. I'm going to tell you that. Yeah, no. I'll call Gary because... I mean, I don't know how many people know this story, and I wouldn't want to embarrass him to his family or something like that if they do hear it. Yeah. Um, but Gary was a Canadian guy who moved to South Africa, and he met a girl and married her. The key point is that she is a former hooker. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, um, and at the time, she was like, I mean, she's always very nice to me. She'd come to the shows. We only worked like once a week, but when we'd see her, she was always very, very nice. And she lived in Durban where we were staying. So at one point, uh, we just get this message saying, hey, uh, we're all going over to Gary's, Mrs.'s parents' place for dinner. And I just thought we were just going for a nice dinner. So like, okay. So I didn't bring any money. I didn't bring anything. I didn't yeah. think we were doing anything. Just yeah. a nice dinner. And it turns out it was Gary's uh, birthday. So we go to the parents' place and have a really nice time. And I think, okay, well, that's about it. Like, I, I hate bars, but now everybody wants to go to a bar. So it's his birthday. I'm not going to be the small yeah. sport. I'll go. Yeah. So we go to this bar, and it's called the Red Bull. It's a monstrous place. holds like five, 6,000 people, and it's always shoulder oh. to shoulder. Like every place is rammed every night because I had to go babysit a few other guys who went there often because I I don't know. They, they'll just disappear. I don't know what happens to them, so I better keep an eye on guys who drink. Once again, I'm the babysitter because I don't drink. Yeah. So um, we go to this bar, we go in, the place is crazy, and yeah, I'm, I'm having a laugh with my buddies and stuff. There's a lot of, you know, gorgeous girls to look at. So we're just kind of killing time. And then out of the blue, Gary's wife comes up to me, and she says, hey, you going to buy me a drink? And I was like, hey? She goes, come on, come on, you're going to buy me a drink, right? And I was like, I, I would. I don't have any cash. I didn't know we were coming out, so I didn't bring any cash. Let me just go. I'll go borrow like a 20 from Cheech and I'll take, yeah, absolutely. I'll buy you a drink. And then she got really mad at me. So, well, if you don't want to buy me a drink, just don't. She takes off through the crowd. I'm like, oh, gee was Now I pissed her off. And I didn't want to piss anybody off. <laughs> so I go hunt uh, Gary down. And I'm like, listen, pal, I just want to say like, I think your missus is hot at me. And I don't <laughs> want her to, you know, it, it, it was unintentional. She wants me to buy her a drink. I didn't, I don't have any money. Yeah. But I was going to borrow money from, from Cheech to, to buy her a drink. He goes, Oh no, you didn't buy her a drink, did you? I'm like, no, I didn't have any money. That's why she's mad. <laughs> goes, oh God, has she been drinking? And he's like really panicking. Oh. I'm like, uh, I, I, she seemed like she had a few, but we're in a bar. Like, I, why wouldn't I expect that? He goes, oh no, we got to find her. And he just launches himself out into the crowd looking for her. And so I'm like, I'm baffled what's going on. So I'm like, geez, you know what's going on? He's like, mm, got me. And um, about half hour later, she's like got her arm around two guys' shoulders, and they're feeding her a drink, and she's chugging back some big 
Oh, liquor God. Yeah. And uh, so Gary says, come on, sweetheart, we got to go. We got to go now. And she <laughs> she flips him off, curses him out, shoves him, and Ooh. then takes off through the crowd. And so we're like, oh, no. <laughs> this, is, <laughs> this is the worst birthday ever, right? <laughs> so, so we uh, we leg it through the crowd to chase her. And she gets out first. Like I said, it's a huge place. We had to do an underground parking thing. And so as we go to the ramp to walk down to the underground parking, she comes flying out and almost runs us all over, driving by herself, liquored up. So we all dive out of the way like we're in a cop movie. And she nips off so that he's like, oh, no, because we had two cars. We went there. There's so many people. We pile everybody, like I think eight people, into this little other car and chase her. And we're zipping all over Durban. I don't. I guess Durban's cops had the night off because they should have pulled somebody over. <laughs> There's, we're zipping over. We're jumping curbs and hitting post boxes and everything. It was like right out of a, like I said, like out of a cop movie. And we're like, I don't know what's she doing. Like, should we be? Should we just stop chasing her so maybe she slows down? She's gonna kill herself or somebody else. And he goes, No, I know exactly where she's going. And uh, she goes back to her old whorehouse. And uh, what the hell was it called? The Monte Carlo. That's what it was called. <laughs> so we, we, we like pull up here. It's in this industrial area. Garbage everywhere. Uh. So this is this already sucks. It's off the beaten path. There's nobody there. There's just a guy sitting in the doorway in a like, like dress pants, sandals, and a wife beater holding a sawed-off shotgun. I was, I was like, well, I guess she's done for the night, huh? He's like, no, no, we got to go in there. I'm like, I don't. I got to go a hundred other places off the top of my head that I'd rather. And he's like, well, we got to go in there. I was like, well, I can't let him go alone. He's going to do something stupid, get himself shot. So we go in, we go up the stairs. They have a big iron door. We have to bang on the door. and He has to say some password or something to get us in. And so we go in and. It's like something out of an old Starsky and Hutch episode. Like it's all red lights and zebra print yeah. uh, couches, and it's like a bar. But then I guess you can take girls straight up to the yeah, room. yeah. And um, yeah, the, the the bouncer guy with the gun comes upstairs, and he's standing there just like popping the gun in his hand, like tapping himself in the palm with the barrel of it, staring us down. <laughs> and Gary goes over and has a screaming argument with her in the, the one doorway and like other bounce coming up and other hookers coming up and everything. Ah. This is going to kick off so badly. Very yeah. nice situation. huh? Yeah. <laughs> Unexpected. Exactly. It's yeah. not how I'm expecting my night to go. So <laughs> go over and I just grabbed, said, listen, buddy, we, let's, let's just go. Let's let everybody calm down. Let's every sober up and, you know, speak with a clear head later. So he's like, okay. So he's, pretty disappointed about the whole night obviously so we go downstairs get in the car we drive to the hotel and we're just sitting in the lobby and it's you know the place is pretty much shut there's nobody behind the desk it's quiet so he's just sitting there kind of half rocking like he's mankind so it's like, i can't believe it. oh my god oh my god i'm like like i don't know like i'm if i kick this whole thing off by not buying her a drink i'm sorry he's like no no it wasn't you no. She can't have alcohol. I'm like, well, yeah, clearly. Why did you take her to a bar? What's like, yeah. And uh, he says, well, you know, I guess that's it. I got, I, I can't live like this. So I guess the marriage is over. I'm like, well, talk to her sober. Maybe she just needs rehab or something. With that, she marches in the room. She comes in from the the street and throws her wedding ring at him. Oh, Swe swears at him. Goes back outside. He goes and picks it up and kind of hangs his head. He goes, well, I guess I got to go talk to her. And he goes outside. And we all just sit in the lobby just in case things get ugly. We want to kind of be there. You know, we don't want to over yeah. Eve's yeah. You know, Eve's, you know, we don't want to listen to them talk because it wouldn't be right. But we do want to be nearby in case because obviously things go freaking sideways quick. So he goes outside. And with that, we hear screeching tires. And she jumps the curb and he has to dive out of the way. She tries to hit him with the car. <laughs> And then he's, they're having a yelling match while she's in the driver's seat. And uh, we had to sit back and wait for them to finish up. And then he went his way, she went her way. And as far as I know, one would hope, uh, their their marriage is no more. Thank God. Yeah, um, that was, that I was... guess Gary is a very happy man today. 
Uh, well, <laughs> you know, one would hope. One would hope. It's, uh, it, was a, it was a pretty freaked out night. I can honestly say, if I went to a high school reunion and they wanted, what's the most you know crazy adventure you ever went on? That's one of the top ones. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know too many people who had an experience like that. 